Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Lukey P Gaming. Uh, this is a new channel. I'm just starting off on YouTube um, to basically play computer games and have guys and girls interact, watch, comment on uh, on what's going on. Um, I do play a bunch of other games as well. So some of the more popular ones are Minecraft and Skyrim. But I wanted to start off by playing uh, this game, Supreme Roller Ultimate. Um, I thought it'd be cool just to do a little playthrough, look at how some of the game mechanics work and see where we get to. Um, I'm not an expert in this game by any means. Um, I normally get my country into the point where it's self-sustaining, uh, where we're ahead in tech and where we're starting to steamroll our other countries. And at that point, to be honest, it often becomes a bit of a grind. The game starts to show slow down because of the number of units in play. Um, and I tend to lose interest at that point, if I'm honest. But who knows, with encouragement from people watching and commenting on this, maybe I will get closer to conquering the world on this playthrough. The first video, I will look a bit at the game mechanics, um, but it's not intended to be a tutorial. We do a bit of learning as we're playing. We'll probably spend the first uh, the first episode of this series looking at, at some of the menus there and the key things you want to set up. Uh, if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial um, or set of tutorial videos there's uh, a channel called average gamer which has done a really good uh, series on some of the key aspects of the game uh, has like 30 minute videos on things like the economy and and various other features of the game um, the only warning i would give is is whereas my channel is aiming to be family friendly um, there is a little bit of uh, of explicit language in some of his videos but for those of you who are okay with that um, by all means do go and check him out um, now on to the setup of our game um, so this is the supreme ruler menu so I go single player I always prefer to play sandbox which gives it a bit more open-endedness um, start with the 1936 always fun I think to start with the oldest um, earliest scenario and see how you work up over time and the first thing, big decision, I guess, is which country to choose. Now, I normally like to play as Brazil. And the reason for that is they are not naturally dragged into World War II. Um, and also, they are a country with a lot of potential. So they've got a lot of the natural resources in their country. They've got the potential to be self-sustaining. Um, they have problems with supply and uh, developing their their resources so you don't start with a whole bunch of money uh, but it's a it's a, a challenging country but not so challenging that you can't get anywhere uh, you also don't have the probability of you know if you start as a country on the border of germany you're probably going to get stomped in the opening few minutes of of a world war ii campaign uh, whereas brazil your biggest threat is if uh, the us decides to march through the Americas, which uh, on a previous game I played myself, they did actually decide to stomp through most of Central America. Um, so we'll see if that happens this time. Uh, so as you can see, Brazil, not particularly rich country. Um, we will be aiming to remedy that on this playthrough. Uh, you have a bunch of game options here. Again, I won't go through them all uh, because there is a guide elsewhere which does that. Um, so resources, standards, you can you know make these uh, abundant if you want a bit of a easier playthrough but I tend to leave things as they are on this uh, so that's that category military settings so the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to make units eliminated when region falls so what this means is when you defeat a country do you get all of its surviving units uh, so the reason for changing that is a, it will stop the game lagging so much it will also stop later on when you've got advanced units and you conquer a country and the first thing you have to do is go and find all their units and scrap them because you don't want to waste the manpower on out of date units and also it it makes steamrolling just a little bit harder because you can't conquer a country and then use its units to conquer its neighbors uh, flat setting game settings uh, don't have a scheduled game end in my experience you know it's just not long enough 120 months 10 years it'll be gone before you know it 
uh, so I'll leave that as none. Uh, difficulties you can play around with this, I tend to leave it on normal um, because the game it's challenging on normal, it's not particularly hard, it's not massively easy, uh, but it's okay. And the last option down here is victory condition. So you can have different types of victories you can win. Uh, the one I often have played in the past is capital. This is simply because uh, it saves capturing every last bit of an opponent's country. You can make a rush for their capital, take their capital, and then the rest of their country surrenders. That does lead to gamey tactics, as you might imagine. So. You know, you park a massive invasion force off the east coast of America, declare war, see if you can rush their capital. And if you can and hold it for a, a day, I think it is, you then get the whole US surrender to you, which doesn't seem realistic. So I've not played complete before. Um, I've played Supreme Ruler 2020, but I tend to go for capital on that as well. Um, so we're going to try complete and see how we get on. Uh, so that's all we need to do here. So let's get started. So, this is the screen that will greet you when you start a game of Supreme Ruler Ultimate. Uh, so you've got your money up here, you've got your game speed which you can change up here. Um, it's on pause at the moment which is the way we'll leave it probably for most of this first video as we just talk through a few things. Um, down here you've got uh, various filters you can put on. Um, so for example at the moment it's got map ownership overlay so if we zoom out with the mouse wheel and have a look you can see the impact of two things which the game has put on by default so weather overlay so you see the clouds there i toggle them off and they disappear and the ownership overlay puts this this coloring on so if i do that you just get the land and if i put it back on you can see the ownership overlay and there's a whole bunch of different categories you can look at map supply which will show you um, a bit of where the supply is good so you can see this country here if they are Colombia have got pretty good supply um, and also a pretty good color actually so red stands out a bit whereas the the color which Brazil is isn't that in that distinguishable from the land um, but it'll do and then you can click this one here which is commodity and population filters so uh, often by default it starts with uh, the population filter on which basically makes land red where there are a lot of people so you can see some of the major cities around here so if i wander off to somewhere like the uk for example you'll see the entire country is red because it's quite densely populated whereas when you come to brazil it's just around the major cities um, we should also have a look so at some of the resources so for example you can see petroleum so if we zoom in here we can see brazil's got the potential to develop some oil fields in certain parts of the country, coal, again, rubber, not a lot, but actually more than a lot of countries who have nothing at all. There's various little bits where you can dot some rubber plants for development. Um, and that's something we'll look at as we develop the country, but just wanted to talk through some of those options. Um, so the options over here. Uh, you have different categories here different tabs so there's land there's state there's finance resources research defense production which is where you build your units and defense which is basically your military units themselves i won't go through all of these categories in massive detail um, because uh, as i mentioned at the start um, average gamer has uh, tutorials on his channel which spend about half an hour on each um, and also because uh, some of them at this stage you don't really need to know if you're just starting off. Um, so let's jump in and look at some of the first things. So we'll just zoom in on some of our capital uh, capital here around Rio de Janeiro and the secondary city which is Sao Paulo. Um, so land. So this tells you when you click on a piece of land what type it is. Um, whether you've uh, got any roads in it so for example if I click here it will change and show me I've got a road there and also importantly so the supply um, so this is quite important for Brazil um, so you can see we don't have great supply so even near to our capital our supply is something only like 39 percent and the reason this is important is because it basically puts a multiplier on your production um, so for example if 
I click on this here so this is some oil fields the supply here is just 21% so if by default one of these oil fields produced 100 units its multiplier is going to be 21% it's only going to produce 21 and yet you still pay the same cost to build it and I'm pretty sure you still play the same you pay, still pay the same cost to maintain it as well so it's definitely in your interest to get supply up because you get a lot more uh, goods back for the value of money uh, you've invested in that site and invest in running it it also means that sometimes you want to actually turn production off in certain places because you pay money to maintain and to produce um, when it might be better off spent somewhere else if your supply is, is really that bad let's move on to state uh, this tells you a bit about your country so you can see we're a dictatorship uh, we've got about 38 million people our treasury is 128 million which really won't go very far um, diplomacy um, so this tells you a bit about your treaty integrity a bit about what the world market thinks of you um, so if that drops really low they can withdraw their uh, kind of military advisors I think that's linked to the League of Nations which was the equivalent of the of the UN between uh, World Wars 1 and 2 um, and that just hurts your military efficiency a bit but often it's dropped because you're on a military conquest uh, campaign so it's normally a necessary price uh, military um, this tells you a bit about your army so how many staff you've got roughly uh, your build capacity um, so in, in order that's land air naval and missiles so you can see Brazil I have one land manufacturing plant one aerial manufacturing plant and none for naval or missiles so not a particularly strong military at this point uh, economic um, this tells you uh, some of the key economic stats to do with your country so you can see the treasury there is 128 million GDP per capita so this is a measure basically of how rich your population is per person um, so the richer they are the more they can buy which will help your internal economy um, it is a bit of a balance though this game this is quite a complicated game uh, which is one of the things I like about it so it's not overly simplistic so for example when your GDP per capita grows it tends to mean more of your people are employed um, it means there is more money chasing things which means your inflation goes up um, so here you can see it's 1.4% I'm normally playing games where I'm running at about 20%. I've seen things which are worth about 100, 200 million now. In 10 years time, they can be worth up to a billion. And that is just the effects of inflation. Mm -hmm. Not too dissimilar to the real world, really. Um, if you think about some of the costs of some things, if you talk to your parents about, uh, if you live in the UK where I live, if I talk to my dad about the cost of his ha our family home when it was bought, uh, he paid uh, a lot less than I paid for uh, the flat I live in and that is simply a function of inflation the family home is a lot bigger than my flat um, sadly uh, so uh, that's inflation unemployment this drops again as your economy improves um, the problem tends to come when you drop below 3% you start to get warnings about running out of people potentially it can make it a bit more difficult to uh, staff up your army it can also mean you have to start making decisions about what things you want to produce and what things you perhaps want to import and it's why growing your your population is quite important and last but not least domestic so this tells you about your population immigration and immigration which you can do things to to limit and to uh, encourage uh, so if you uh, if you want more people coming in you can spend more on your cultural subsidies which will tend to encourage people in and the same with births and deaths if you spend more on your health care or on family subsidies you will see those um, those altering okay so that's that tab I think that's probably all the time we want to spend on that one um, finances uh, so a key part of the game um, along here you've got some of your key uh, stats again uh, which you saw in the previous tab you also got things like your domestic approval rating uh, your average social rating which for brazil is quite low because we can't afford much um your overall tax rate 
and uh, various things to do with if you want to take out uh, loans. Now, I don't normally ever take loans on the game, but um, sometimes if you if you take your eye off the ball, you may end up end up having to take out a loan if this threatens to drop below zero and tanks your economy. Um, so you can see your income here, and it gives you a little bit of a breakdown of what what that comes from. Uh, the tabs over here will show more information on all of this, and we'll look at them in a minute. Uh, your expenses, um, your surplus and deficit, and also down here are your trades. Now those are quite important because in effect they're not included in this. Um, and you can actually run a deficit economy which you prop up with exports. Um, so often you will end up with more on expenses because you're researching things heavily or you've decided to put up social care a lot for your population and you make it back by exporting things across the world so this will tell you um, how much you're making from that and again you can see more details on some of the tabs here um, this is your cabinet minister so Robert Mutawara Mutawa. no idea how you say that um, so uh, this gentleman uh, I'm sure is a very good guy but I don't want him messing around with things so I want to lock him out of all of this and the reason I want to do that is because um, often your ministers simply don't have the same priorities as you now you can set their priorities here so you can tell them the kind of things you'd like them to do so for example if we tell them to improve GDP you'll see it will improve domestic approval rating because your people have more money um, but it's likely to lower taxes so that they have more money to spend and it will increase your spending on production and defense because you're you're basically spending more to make sure that your people have got money in their pocket and it can cause significant inflation so you can give all these different priorities to your ministers and in some ways this is often a good idea to look at if you need an idea so if you're struggling with inflation you can have a look at how you how you might manage that so you can see here lower domestic markups will um, help manage your inflation um, so um, yeah those can be useful uh, I tend never to use ministers because quite simply they don't operate they, they operate in in little pockets so this guy can be merrily working away if you live in building you may be saving for something and he's got no idea what that is and he goes off and thinks oh I've got a big bank balance let's build some oil fields and you were saving for a rubber plantation or something like that um, you can also change your tax rate here uh, as well income reports this tells you where your money's coming from um, so you can see here if you hover over treasury you can see 24 million from taxes 7 million from production so that is making goods and selling them to your local population so for example if they need uh, food they will purchase some of your agricultural production and that will generate you money there uh, expenses uh, so this tells you what you're spending money on so uh, these can uh, go up over time so it's obviously not a lot on state right now because we don't really have much going on uh, treasury is how much we're spending on uh, social services and importantly construction goes here so construction costs can be very very high and you need to watch that so don't go on a building splurge at the start of the game because you will very rapidly run out of money and find yourself with half built things making nothing and have just put yourself in trouble production so one of the things I really like about this game is it's not like some games where you just plop down a oil field and you get oil from there forevermore uh, for having paid the initial investment costs you actually have to pay to continue to produce things um, and this tells you for exa example here we're producing paying six million to produce stuff and we are selling stuff for seven million to our local population so that's good um, later on in the game if you're running an export economy uh, you may find that production is a lot higher because in effect you might be spending eight million on production selling 7 million of it to your population here and then you're stockpiling or trading away some of it in your last day trades um, and then the last two on here are research and defense which are kind of self-explanatory um, previous day trades you can see this in units or dollars best to look at it in dollars 
so you can see where you're getting your money so you can see here you've got 2.47 coming in uh, from trades and this is what you're trading to actually get that uh, electric power you can see is a problem for brazil so we're having to import a lot of that i say a lot it's not compared with the agriculture but in order to become self-sustaining that is probably one of the first things we're going to look at um, uh, building some electric power plants um on to tax so you can change all different types of tax rates which have different impacts on things it can be very useful to play around with individual ones um, so you've got well you can see them down here what you've got rather than hovering over them all so you might want to change your property tax or your pension tax specifically i normally stick to moving them around as a whole so we're just going to stick that up a little bit put it up to 48 percent um so that's taxation that will affect this um, and over here we have our social spending so you have different categories of spending um, again a lot of them are quite obvious for anyone who is familiar with um, these type of strategy games if you do have any questions about any of them do feel free to drop a question in the comments but for example healthcare is it will help your population live longer it will reduce your number of deaths which means when we looked at earlier the population so the the deaths uh, total would go down which helps improve your population uh, family subsidy in effect that uh, encourages people to have children which will increase your birth rate cultural subsidy that encourages people to emigrate into your country um, so lots of ones which are self-explanatory here the one i want to talk about just a little bit more is infrastructure so this helps govern your supply ratings um, so having it on 21 percent is not a very good idea and the reason it's not a very good idea is it in effect makes everything in this country less efficient production wise so we're running a large surplus so what i want to do here um, is i want to put this infrastructure thing up so you can see here it's currently one million it's recommended as five we're just going to drag that one up here we're going to drag it up to about there so we're still making a fair amount of money we'll probably run it for a day and see what the economy is looking like before we adjust anything further um, and you can see the the surplus and deficit updates as i change it so you can have a good idea so if i put it all the way up there i'll be running 10 but let's just put it up there for now this moves everything um, if you don't want to change these all individually you can click and drag that and move them all up or down and then the last one on here is just about the infrastructure and um, it tells you how much road and rail and how much it's costing you um, next one resources so this is probably one of the most important tabs for the economy um, so the first thing I always recommend doing is going and locking out your minister from everything um, this is okay as long as you pay a bit of attention to what's going on here and I'll talk you through some of the key things and then we'll probably quickly whip through the other three tabs and then wrap this video up um, so we're we'll start on agriculture and we'll just probably look at this and then dip into some of the other tabs as needed for example so here you can see we're producing 78,000 our population is using 33,000 ish uh, we've got 535,000 in stock and we traded away 45,000 in the previous day the production cost so the average cost we pay to produce each unit is $48 and you can sell it for $55 on the world market at the moment um, so what does that mean for this one so if we look here again you've got a cabinet minister who you can set priorities to such as you know increasing domestic prices uh, subsidizing agriculture all this kind of thing again we've locked the minister out because we want to be controlling our economy not him thank you very much uh, so come down to industry controls so each one of these uh, resources has its own category of industry controls so you can be quite flexible in what you want to prioritize production for so here you've got 100 percent of capacity which means you're producing everything you possibly can 
you can of course put that down and put that up and um, so for example you might want to try and find a way to you know roughly match it to what you're making or what your population needs a better way to do that though is you can change this to a, a certain percentage of demand and that will flex so if your population suddenly decides they want 40,000 it will flex the demand up to 40,000 um, you can also for example decide you want to do 105% of demand which means you've got 5% spare and that can go one of two places either you can put it down here and it will go into the stockpile by default or you might be trading it away so you may tell uh, on a on a future option menu we'll look at to trade all the surplus and that will instantly get traded out of your country uh, as long as uh, you're selling at an acceptable price um, so for agriculture we want to leave this on capacity because we're making a lot of our money from trading away agriculture at the moment domestic price so this is the price your population pays so you can see uh, we are charging our population more than they would pay on the world market for it that is standard that is common um, and it's part of how you make your money as a country you sell your population the goods they need now you can put this up uh, which will have the standard effect of supply and demand it will reduce demand because there'll be a higher price it will make your people less happy similarly you could put it down which with agriculture will encourage some growth of population because food's a bit cheaper uh, and would also make your your people happier uh, this tab here tells you what you're using um, the agriculture for not so interesting on agriculture but if we switch to something like electricity you can see here we're using a lot on consumer goods uh, not very much on military um, and a medium amount on industry and the civilian demand is about 8,000 megawatts and it tells you the uh, what you're using to produce this so we're using 8,000 tons of coal per day and about 2,000 barrels of oil um, so this can be interesting because you can get an idea if you're in a you know if you're in a limited situation you may for example want to turn off producing military goods um, because you're running short of electricity as you can see there um, so that's that one uh, top importers and top exporters and consumers and producers this can be very helpful um, because it helps you know who to buy from and who to sell from who you might want to cozy up to if someone's consistently uh, the top exporter or if they're the top producer of something you really want you want to go and try and defend that country and, and get more favorable trade deals from them uh, one thing I will say is this is the previous day's trade um, so uh, for example if we look at Japan there you can see they're running a, a a deficit of about 20,000 tons of food per day but their last day trade was 222,000 so they were buying for several days um, so it's not necessarily uh, whoever's the top is the biggest importer consistently it may just be on a particular day and the same with exporting uh, so we come on to this one and then uh, and then we probably will think about wrapping this up so imports and exports these are really key these help you control your economy so if we just start down here buyers needed up to a certain amount so you don't want to play around with this uh, what you want to know is how much you're willing to pay to keep your economy functioning here so for example if you put this down to 56 and you think great I'm not going to you know I'm only going to pay 56 and it's 55 so I've got a bit of buffer that isn't how this game works um, this is up to a certain price so basically what this means is up to 80 oh, I can't get it back onto 80 now but up to 82 uh, you will buy things from the market if you need to and you've got the money so as long as the market price which is $55 that there is below 82 or at 82 you will buy things off the market if you need to if it goes above that you will not buy things off the market um, so your population will starve um, or in the case of electricity you will not have enough electricity and part of your industries will grind to a halt so you want to have this set at the maximum tolerant level uh, and the same with exporting so exporting here um, 
you can choose an effect on this the minimum price you want to export at which is the minimum it's not the price you will always sell at so for example if I set this to 37 I'm not going to now sell everything at 37 I'm gonna sell at 55 and I'm gonna sell as low as 37 if that market price was to drop to 37 uh, and that's quite important that those are minimum prices uh, or so the maximum price in the case of purchasing or minimum prices in the in the case of selling they are not the price you will buy and sell at um, bulk purchases these are uh, useful if you're looking to get either a large quantity of something for a building project or you're looking to exploit how the market is moving so for example on industry here I might say actually I've decided that 1689 is quite cheap I'm gonna put it to as near as I can get it so 1700 and I want to buy uh, you know 50,000 units which will cost me a maximum of 86 million and as long as this market price is below 1700 I will buy units and this total here will drop down as I buy them and then eventually when it's dropped to zero it will cease to buy bulk purchases um, that can be good like I say if you're stockpiling goods for a particular reason or if you want to exploit um, a particular cheap good in the market so I've seen for example sometimes when your production cost of industrial goods is much more than the market price um, let's say that was 10,000 you clearly want to buy off the market and you may want to buy it on mass so you may say actually I'm willing to pay up to you know 1,900 uh, for industry goods because it's costing me so much to produce and I want to buy the whole lot obviously that's a lot more money than we've got but what this would do is it would buy those goods and it in effect puts a floor on the mark uh, the market price so if this price then bumps up uh, above 1,900 the mark your your purchases here in effect wait until it drops back below and then when it drops back below you will start buying units again uh, and I should say that is subject of course so that's your bulk purchases but you also have your auto purchases on so you may have actually um, you know buyers needed up to uh, I don't know 1000 or sorry 2400 um, so you will buy the minimum amount you need to keep your economy running providing you've got the funds available and then here you may say well actually if the price does drop low enough I want to buy a whole bunch of it at this lower price and that is a okay way to run your economy um, so that's bulk purchases exports uh, so this is the price per unit so you can see here um, let's go back to agriculture because that's a better example so here we are willing to sell at uh, a minimum of $56 per unit here bulk sales so if you see there I've got a stockpile I can choose to sell that stockpile so if I sell that stockpile that will obviously check it will drop that stockpile right down but my money will go up um, and so you may choose to sell uh, to the world market like that you may decide that actually you're struggling for money you've got a stockpile of something and you want to dump it on the market um, and you can set the minimum price per unit here um, you can also do automatic sales each day so you can choose to sell a certain amount of your surplus production the amount you don't sell will increase your stockpile so you may for example if you're a big enough producer of something like oil you may want to stockpile oil to drive the price up and then uh, you can sell it either direct to people in diplomacy or you can uh, you know trickle it through to the market at a higher price so for example if I had you know if I was the only country in the world producing agriculture for exports I may decide actually I want to put the price to 60 uh, I will sell 20% uh, of my surplus and what will happen is until the price reaches 60 um, I would have 
go up here and tick up here today uh, as units available for sale and the other 80% I would have go into my stockpile um, and that can be a good way of controlling the economy um, and the last one on here this helps you um, turn facilities on and off so um, we haven't actually got any agricultural facilities and this game is a bit funny with that particular tab you have to go out and back in um, so for example we've got 32 coal plants you could turn them off from here if you wanted to turn them off and you can see it dumping around jumping around the map or you can put them back online um, you can also build things from here I prefer to right click on the map and you get your build up and you decide what you want to build from there um, right this video is running very long much longer than I planned um, so just to whip through the last few things here so research kind of self-explanatory you can look on this tab here um, obviously you want to lock your minister out of everything again you can look on this tab here and you can look at uh, what kinds of things you want to research you can click on them and find out what they do a bit about how much they cost the rough research time um, you can see what they lead to so improve military logistics well that's going to increase my infrastructure rating up to five percent so that's something good we want to get to eventually um, and that is research you can also we well, have to research individual units so if you if you have the technology of something you still have to research the uh, the actual unit in order to be able to build it and you can see the different categories there um, this tells you a bit about technology races so how far you are to in this case it's the race for the bomb you have the space race the internet race and the man on mars race depending on how far you get in the game um, and this tells you about what technologies you know so far here this queued available and available research slot so every research center you build you get one more research slot um, research centers a cost a lot b take about two years to build from memory although you can speed that with engineers and when you're researching you have to pay the costs of the researching so that uh, can be very expensive but i find it's a great way to spend money um, because your economy will start firing eventually and then you want to be ahead in tech defense production so this is where you go to build units so um, again first thing go into your minister lock him out of controls um, unless you want him to have control of something some people like their minister to have control of garrisons actually because that's something you may not want to micromanage um, and you can choose here so right now I've only got one building slot so I could choose for example to build mounted infantry or or different units just by clicking on them here uh, that would make it produce something continuously to so say if I wanted to produce mounted infantry as much as possible I would say I actually want you to continue that I click it once and it would build me a, a mounted infantry forevermore rather than having to um, uh, to queue up a massive load of them and uh, what I've done there is I've just double clicked on it and it's told me some of the stats um, about this uh, and what it can do uh, it's, it's ranges uh, what damage it does etc rough price to build military goods needed annual maintenance um, that we'll look at in a bit more detail I suspect as we play through the game I just cancel that because I don't want to build it right now that's probably all I want to look at on this tab for now I think yeah and the last but not least is the defense tab so this will tell you how many units you've got deployed how many units you've got in reserve you can see it by branches of the army so you can see for example here you've got uh, 16 air units in reserve um, and the reason that's gone to four is because when I've broken it down I'm actually sitting on an air base at the moment so whereas here I get all 16 if I choose a specific place it tells me the four which are located at that base and if I choose deploy my unit would pop up there uh, but 
I don't want that unit to be active so I would choose to put it into reserve which you do by hitting that and choosing give orders and that would then put itself into reserve um, so uh, we're going to end there um, this was quite a long video so thank you for sticking with it if you did um, hopefully there were some useful hints and tips there um, to help anyone who's new to the game uh, do drop me a comment uh, if you've watched let me know what you thought um, any questions about the game by all means uh, put them down the bottom and I'll do my best to answer them uh, if you do want to give me a like or a subscribe that would really be appreciated as I'm just getting uh, started with this channel and thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon